And it's that part of the show. It's time for this. Oh, I love your song. What's your yes, song? Time for you must know what your song is. Your song, well, we let people write in with a sad you. story and he just reads it to sad music. Oh, Today, like Simon Bates, aren't you? Yeah, same thing. I used to like that. Into us. Dear Andy, in August 2003, I met the love of my life, Gordon. We met on a skiing holiday in Austria. He made me love and laugh like I never had before. And six months later, we moved in together. He was my soulmate, quick. and we were so happy for the first few Very years. Quick. Then things started to change. With hectic work schedules, we started spending less time together. We never He's rowed much, but our sex life was virtually non-existent at that tell point. Me about I it. could feel we were drifting apart. Then Gordon started coming home late. Uh. He blamed work, but in the back of my mind, I had suspicions. Dirty pig. Then bizarrely, I began to notice items of my clothing turning up in the washing basket that I simply don't remember wearing. When I asked Gordon if he knew anything about them, fancy he woman. said no, but always appeared slightly evasive when I brought the subject I up. I bet he did. What's his fancy I had to go away for a couple of nights on a work conference, but when one of the seminars was cancelled, I had no choice but to head home much earlier than expected. Oh, God. But when I arrived home, got I got the shock of my life. I bet you did. I oh, walked God. into the front room Hanging to find out of Gordon and two other men. All three of them were dressed as women. <gasps> I lost my mind and I was confronted him right there and then as the other man left and he was heartbroken and confessed to being a closet transsexual all of his life. I felt devastated and felt betrayed. Unable to accept the situation, I threw Gordon out. It was the most painful time of my life. We had little or no contact over the next few months and my life simply felt empty without my oh, soul. Well. I was slowly going downhill until a friend from work convinced me to go out for a few drinks with the girls. Be it off. Reluctantly, I agreed and it was that night I met Ian. He was the doorman at a nightclub. I went home with him that night and he gave my body something I'd been yearning for for a very long time. What time's we this? We started to see each other after that, but I always felt guilty and felt as if I was cheating on Gordon, what? so I never mentioned my relationship with that. Ian to him ever. And I got a call from a friend telling me that Gordon had been badly beaten up and was in a coma in hospital. Oh. Apparently, he'd been out on the town and was attacked by a gang of lads, but unfortunately, he couldn't outrun them in his high heels. I raced straight to the hospital to find Gordon in a right state. Tubes everywhere. He was a mess. Oh. It was horrible. I stayed by his side day and night. And we both wept uncontrollably. Oh. It was then that I told Gordon about Ian, and to my surprise, Gordon wasn't been upset with at all. In fact, he was just relieved that I'd finally found happiness again. It was at that moment that we made a pact to be BFF, best friends forever. Oh, it's Fast you forward would. one year and Ian and I are engaged and have set a date. Gordon is finally scheduled to have the sex change operation that he's been waiting for all of his life. And I'm thrilled to say that he'll be by my side as I walk down the aisle. As Gordon, or should I say Jordan, will be my chief bridesmaid. Please could you play our song, which is the Bee Gees, More Than A Woman. There's three lads sitting in a van now, pissing their sides laughing. Who? Plasterers. What, the men that Gordon was with? No, you idiot. There's three lads brought that and sent that in. That's not real more than a woman. The BGs. That never happened. 